I'm Lisa Corsten and I'm the co-director of the Department of Science and Technology at the National Research Foundation Center of Excellence Food Security and um, I'm personally responsible for food safety. So you may ask me, well, why is food safety important in the context of food security? So let me just take a step back. We have a right to food. We have a right to safe, nutritious food. Now, the safety is part of the bigger picture of secure food for the people of the country. If we produce enough food and we have adequate food supplies, it must still be safe. So from the point of production all up to the point of consumption, the food must be safe, it must be assured safe, and it's actually the responsibility of government to ensure that we have safe food for the people. It's the mandate of Department of Health, Department of Agriculture, and in the context of trade to export or import food, uh, it's also Department of Trade and Industry. So it's multiple government departments that's taking the responsibility for safe food with both within the context of uh, South Africa, uh, the continent, the food we export, and of course being a world player, the food we trade. Now I just want to take a step back in terms of food safety. So if we unpack food safety, we can primarily say we have microbial hazards that may cause a food safety concern. And these are typical bacterial uh, pathogens. And we talk about human pathogens that use the food as a vehicle. We also talk about waterborne pathogens. Pathogens that primarily occur in water that may actually complete their life cycle going via food into the human body or via animal, the gut, back into the water system, onto the crop uh, and back into the whole food chain. So it's very important that we distinguish between bacterial pathogens that is uh, also human pathogens and that actually in a transitionary phase of their life use plants or the animal or meat products to, to be transported um, from one environment to the other environment. Um, and it's also very important that we understand that microbes are everywhere. We have microorganisms in nature. They're, in, they're around us. They're on our body. They're in the water we drink. Um, they are by nature, de facto, there. They are everywhere. N they are not all bad. Only a small percentage can we categorize as human pathogens. And also a small percentage we can categorize as plant pathogens or uniquely pathogens of animals. So we distinguish between the different groups, but there's certain phases where they actually transgress and move between these different spaces, plant, animal, or human. And it's those organisms that we're specifically interested in. We also have viruses, um, which is a totally different category, um, and fungal pathogens, which often produces toxins. That's very important for us in the context of food safety. And I want to specifically refer to mycotoxins. Uh, mycotoxins is a bigger family of toxins, secondary metabolites produced by fungus while it's growing in a plant product. For instance, grain. So, um, for instance, in peanut butter, uh, it can be very important. Uh, a very important category is also your pesticide residues. And uh, we do know that we use pesticides um, both in animal production systems and or crop protectants in plant production systems. And it's these residues that remain on the plant after harvest that actually may have a detrimental effect on human health if it occurs at levels above what's maximum allowed according to global uh, codex agreement standards. So globally, we set these standards. So we say food sold to the public may not contain certain pesticide residue levels at levels higher than that. We also say that certain pesticides are banned and may not be used. So uh, these are two very important categories. And in South Africa, in fact, we do test. We test everything we export. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for everything that's imported. Neither can I say the same for f food that's produced locally and actually distributed and consumed locally. This is a very important point because it also pulls through to the current listeriosis outbreak. 
Do we taste all the food that's produced and consumed or distributed, sold and consumed in this country for the presence of uh, human pathogens? And do we test imported material for that? And do we test exported material? And that's a very important dynamic. It's also very important to understand that we do have standards. We have international standards and we have local standards. And do we use the same standards for the food that we export versus the food that's imported or locally produced? Now, the research we are doing of focusing mainly on the presence of these foodborne pathogens um, within the whole supply chain from the point of production, both in animal and plant products. And we actually look at the presence of these at the point of sale up to the plate. So at the end of the day, we can hopefully say, how safe is the food on my plate? And then how safe is the food in my shopping basket? So enter Listeria, the unexpected tsunami. We knew it was going to happen, not if it was going to happen, when. We didn't realize it was going to be Listeria and we were not prepared for the extent of the outbreak. In fact, I believe that everyone was guilty, not only government or industry, but the whole country, every role play in this whole supply chain. And that is from the point of a production facility or processing facility being prepared in terms of hygiene, facility hygiene, um, implementation of food safety standards, uh, the certification bodies and the auditors who was supposed to self-regulate that system within industry. And then, of course, our regulators. Where were they? How involved were they? And then, how did they interact with each other? And where was the scientists? How did we support government? How did we guide industry? Or have we been living in three different silos and we've never created a platform where we can actually communicate and share and use the scientific evidence to guide our standards? Have we got enough capacity in South Africa to do our enforcement? Are we competent enough? The people responsible to, to, to look after our food safety in this country, are they competent enough? Do we have enough capacity? And are we training the right people in this country? And do we have enough researchers focusing on food safety and the important challenges we have? So if you ask me how important is food safety, it's a critical aspect of food security. But if we have a massive outbreak like this, it is a major food security catastrophe. Because now we have to remove food from the whole food chain. We have lost our trust in the whole food system. And it will have a long-term impact on our ability to trade, to export. And the big question will be, how will we handle imported products in future? And what measures will we use to measure our own industry compared to imported material? And I think this is the debate going forward. How do we build these bridges?